Hey there, I'm Sam from solar.com and today we are going to talk about the three main benefits of pairing solar panels with battery storage in California. Like solar panels, battery storage has a reputation of being a luxury product that's reserved for hoity-toity homeowners with cash to burn. But today, especially with NEM3 taking effect in California, battery storage is a means of cost savings, of energy independence, and of backup power for grid outages. So today we're going to talk about those three benefits of batteries, and we're going to talk about some incentives that you can use to lower the cost of buying battery storage. Let's dive right in with a look at the number one benefit, which is additional cost savings for your solar system. I know it sounds counterintuitive to buy a $10,000 battery in order to save money, but one of the driving factors behind California passing NEM 3.0 was to encourage homeowners to buy batteries so they can store and use their own solar electricity instead of pushing and pulling from the grid. Now, if you're not quite familiar with NEM 3.0, feel free to check out our explainer up here. Uh, but the reason battery storage comes in handy in California is because solar production peaks during the day when everybody's at work or school and nothing's running in the house. So there's a bunch of excess solar electricity during the day. And then when the sun's going down in the evening, people are coming home, turning on the ACs, their ovens, their laundry machines. Electricity spikes in the evening right while solar production is going down. So solar production and demand tend to miss each other in California. This overproduction during the day and underproduction at night stresses the grid and it fuels demand for peaker plants, which, op which often run on fossil fuels. Basically, what NEM 3.0 does is reduce the value of solar exports. That's the excess solar energy that people put on the grid from their solar systems by around 75% to encourage homeowners to use their own battery storage instead of pushing and pulling from the grid. For example, your utility might charge you 40 cents per kilowatt hour in the evening uh, to use electricity and only credit you 5 cents per kilowatt hour during the day to push energy on the grid. Now, if you're pushing and pulling electricity from the grid, that's a pretty raw deal. You're paying way more for electricity than you that you use than you are for electricity that you put onto the grid. But if you have battery storage, you can store that cheap electricity that you produce during the day and use it at night when uh, electricity rates go up. So let's say you buy a five kilowatt solar system and a 10 kilowatt battery for net cost of $20,000. That's after applying the 30% federal tax credit. Now in Southern California, this five kilowatt system can be expected to produce around 210,000 kilowatt hours throughout a 25 year life. And if you divide the net cost of that system by the total production, you get a levelized rate of around nine and a half cents per kilowatt hour. So by adding battery storage, you can get off the NEM3 roller coaster and you can essentially set a low consistent rate for your electricity. In fact, NEM3 is designed so that solar systems with battery storage have the same or shorter payback period than solar only systems. And whether you agree with the NEM3 decision or not, that's the rules that you have to play by if you're a customer of PG&E, SCE, or SDG&E. Fortunately, there are ways to gain the NEM3 system using battery storage to increase your energy cost savings. Now I said earlier that export rates are on average 75% lower under NEM3 than they were under NEM2, but that doesn't mean they're always lower. In fact, there are certain times a year under NEM3 when export rates will be higher than $3 per kilowatt hour. This chart shows the weekday export rates for a PG&E customer under NEM3.0. As you can see, they are very low during the peak solar production in March, April, and May. But now take a look at the evening hours in August and September when export rates are over $2.50 per kilowatt hour during the weekdays and over $3 per kilowatt hour on the weekends. So if I were a solar owner under NEM3, I would plan some nice family outings for these evenings. Maybe go to the beach, go catch a movie, go camping, go swimming, whatever. And I'd set my battery to export electricity during those hours and I'd watch the savings pile up. Now this is called load shifting and it's one of the biggest advantages of having battery storage in any place with time use rates. 
but it's going to be really handy in California under an M3.0. And while we're talking about energy savings, we might as well go over the incentives that you can use to reduce the cost of buying a battery. Now the first is the residential clean energy credit, which is essentially the 30% solar tax credit. So if you spend $10,000 on a battery, you can claim a tax credit worth $3,000 on your federal tax return, uh, effectively reducing the cost of the battery to $7,000. California also has a self-generation incentive program known as SGIP, which provides rebates for uh, battery storage. Now rebate levels vary from 15 cents per watt hour to $1 per watt hour. Depends on the size of the battery, your utility provider, and some special circumstances. So for an average income household in PG&E territory, uh, the incentive would be worth 15 cents per watt hour. So for a 10,000 kilowatt hour battery, that'd be worth $1,500. Now the higher incentives are reserved for people with low income and special circumstances like living in a fire prone area or having a medical device uh, that runs on electricity now the SGIP rebate can be combined with the tax credit to further reduce the cost of your battery storage. However, it's important to note that the tax credit applies to the cost of the battery after the SGIP rebate is applied. So if you buy a $10,000 battery and you claim a $1,500 SGIP rebate, that brings the, the price paid down to $8,500. And that's what your tax credit is based on. So 30% of $8,500 is $2,550. That brings the net cost of the battery down to $5,950. And that's nearly 40% off a battery between those two incentives alone. Now, SGIP has been around for a while and the funds for the general level incentive are running pretty low. But as luck would have it, new funds were written into the NEM3 decision and there's around $230 million expected to return to that general fund in, on July 1st, 2023. Now the exact incentive level with the new funds is yet to be determined. But here's a little pro tip. In most solar incentive programs, the incentive level is greatest at the beginning of the program and it dwindles as it continues. So if you're thinking about battery storage in 2023, you might wanna keep an eye on those new funds and when they kick in in July. So batteries are gonna play a crucial role in energy cost savings for NEM3 customers in California. But that's only the first reason to pair uh, battery storage with your solar system. The second reason is the one that most people think about when they think of battery storage, which is backup power for when the grid goes down. According to data from the US Department of Energy, power outages due to extreme weather and from non-weather events like vandalism and cyber attacks are both on the rise. And guess what? California was in the top three states with 129 major weather-related power outages from 2000 to 2021. In fact, California is one of the few states with public safety power shutoff events. That's where they shut down the grid on purpose in order to reduce the risk of wildfire. So solar and battery can not only help you power essential systems during outages, think Wi-Fi, think fridge, your water heating, cell phone charging. It can actually help prevent outages in the first place. For example, during a record heat wave in September 2022, a fleet of residential batteries sitting in people's garages uh, helped produce over 340 megawatts of power to keep the grid online and keep people's ACs running. Now for reference, 340 megawatts is about the size of a mid-sized power plant. And that was about only half the capacity of that fleet at the time. So obviously no one's cheering for power outages and we hope they never happen. But here's one way to think about it. If the payback period of going solar with battery storage is the same as going solar without battery storage under an M3, then the deciding factor might be that you have that backup power to power your own home and to help the grid become more resilient in the future. The third benefit of battery storage in California that I'm gonna to cover today is energy independence. Now, energy independence has become this buzzword that means a handful of things. So let me explain what I mean by it in the context of home solar and battery. Now, electricity is an essential cost that you're going to pay throughout your life one way or another. The status quo is to pay for a utility, and in most places, there's only one utility to choose from. Going through a utility gives you no control over where your electricity comes from, how much it costs, 
and what your monthly payments are funding. At the end of the day, you're essentially a, a captive rate payer that has two choices. Either pay what your utility tells you to pay or you sit in the dark. By having a solar and battery system, you can flip that script. Now all of a sudden you control the production, the transmission, the storage, and the consumption of that electricity. And by tweaking how big your system is, what kind of equipment you buy, how you finance your system, you can actually can control your electricity costs. Furthermore, by choosing which products you decide to spend money on and which installers you choose, you can kind of decide where your electricity payments are going. So to me, energy independence isn't so much about going off grid and living in the hills somewhere, although you can do that with solar and battery. Uh, it's more about taking back control of an essential cost of living. And solar and battery not only allows you to do that, but it also provides backup power, as we mentioned earlier, and it can be much cheaper than paying for grid electricity. If you're all curious about how you can benefit from solar and battery storage, visit solar.com, simply click the link in the description below and learn more through our learning center or just go get quotes from vetted local installers. I'm Sam from solar.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.